Bishop, you know, there's been so much going on in the news, so much unrest. It's amazing. We really need to speak to it, don't we? It's so true. We as Catholics need to be consistently prophetic about the dignity of the human person, the sanctity of human life, and the beauty of our families. There's a very powerful story from Belmont Abbey in North Carolina. There is a chapel there that during the Civil War, there was a block on which the slave trade was conducted on that property. And in the 19th century, when it was taken over by the Benedictine monks, somebody had a very prophetic and beautiful idea that it was healing to history and very forward-looking. One of the monks decided to take that block on which families were separated and so much human anguish and the agony of slavery was experienced and turn that block into a baptismal font. On that baptismal font was placed a plaque that said these words, people were once sold into slavery on this block, but through the waters of baptism, they are now liberated as sons and daughters of God. This is such a powerful historical example of the Catholic Church's call to be prophetic in seeing the dignity of the human person and to fight against any form of racism. We as Catholics believe that any form of racism is a heresy against our theology of baptism where we're all called to be sons and daughters of God. I think of that powerful image of St. Paul, though many we are one, and the image of that mosaic that the church is, that beautiful gift to God that is that mosaic. You see it very real in the National Shrine, the mosaic of Christ the King, made of small pieces, small tiles, but ultimately when you view that, you see Christ the King of the universe. I think of that in this time when the church needs to really shine forth Christ the King of the universe. And it's interesting, we're in the midst of a powerful weekend where Cardinal Gregorio Rosa Chavez comes to give us a certain amount of a witness to Archbishop Romero. And so we remember that um, we're called to be those prophetic voices and to shine the light of Christ's healing love on a world that is torn apart by strife and violence and, some, and even hatred. And uh, to quote St. John, to overcome evil by doing good. Yes, and this whole sense of the presence being made in the image and likeness of God, the whole history of slavery in our country, the whole history of mistreatment of Native Americans, the whole history now of immigration and mistreatment of immigrants to this country in the present moment, it all ties together, and there's a beautiful consistency and theology and spirituality of communion and mission of our Catholic Church that is so unifying. It's about being the light, as you're saying. It's about being that light that shines forth and allows darkness to be conquered. We've spoken about that before, haven't we? It's true. And you know, you think about how light often kind of exposes the wounds. Light exposes sort of the, the messiness on the windows and on the walls. But the fact that it, the light is shi shines on it to heal it not just to kind of dwell on it, but really to heal it. So hopefully we can be powerful instruments of healing as we proclaim the healing of Jesus Christ. And right in the midst of the turmoil that's occurring every day, we go to blessed uh, Archbishop Oscar Romero, who said that any form of powerful, constructive social change is rooted in each one of our interior conversions. Let's each open ourselves up to the light of Christ and allow that conversion to heal us, to heal our church, and to heal the world.